and they just kept repeating this and like all and then some of them were speaking in tongues and then some of them were screaming at me like they just kept going and I, I I wasn't saying anything and they were trying some of them were trying to push me to the ground like you were filled with the Holy Spirit you're like kept saying that and like and you don't want to die you don't want to die and I just I was I decided part way through this while they were talking about how everything in my life was because I let the devil do this to me I was just think I was having flashbacks at this point thinking back to everything that happened to me and now I already have victim's guilt from all of this, okay? Like, it's already hard not to blame myself, even though I was a young child at that time. And now I'm thinking, somehow, these people all blame me too. And somewhere in the middle of all of that, I decided, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to live anymore. I, want, I just want all of this to end, and I never want to have these flashbacks anymore. I never want to think about this. I never want to have any of these problems in my life, and the only way... I can get rid of all of this and all of these people who blame me and all of the people in my I start thinking all of the people in my life blame me for what happened to me. That's what I start I start thinking like everybody probably thinks this and these people are the most honest people. But everybody in my life thinks that this is my fault. That this happened to me. And I decide that this is going to be the last night that I want to live. So, eventually I do collapse onto the ground. They all think it's because I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm sobbing and like, like sobbing heavily. And my boyfriend's sister is like over there, like, I'm so happy. Like, look, she's crying tears of joy because of the, like how close she is with God at this moment. And I just wanted to tell her no. I'm not sobbing tears of joy. I am, this is one of the worst moments of my life. I am miserable. I can't believe these people are saying these things to me. And I can't believe, it's like they were in my head. I've never experienced anything like it before. So I, I, I texted my boyfriend when that was all over. We were still in the service. And I just told him I'm sorry. He was confused. He didn't know what for. I just told him, I'll explain later or you'll find out later or something along those lines. And somebody at the front was like, you know, I want you all to go back to your rooms and reflect on this. Don't text. Don't talk to each other. So when we left, my boyfriend comes up to me. He's like, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? What are you sorry for? And then somebody runs up to us and he's like, no, don't talk to each other. Stop socializing. You're supposed to go back to your rooms and reflect on what just happened. And he's like, no. Listen, if I could just talk to her for just a minute, I, this is important. And I just told him, like, it's, it's okay. It's fine. I'll talk to you later. And I just went to my room. And I sat there, and I waited for somebody to get out of the bathroom. All I had, I had my pills that were divided up into each night that I was supposed to take them. And each day. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try an overdose. I don't know if it's going to be enough. But I'm gonna try because I don't want to live. This is horrible, and I can't. And everything up until now in my life, there's been so much that's horrible, and now I feel like all of it was my fault. I went into the bathroom, not knowing if if this was even enough to overdose on. I locked the door because there was a door and like a little a little space, and then a that had nothing there and then another door that was the actual bathroom. I locked that door and I locked the bathroom door and then I saw someone had left their razor on the sink. This is very graphic so if you have watched up until this point I don't want you to and you will be triggered now stop watching. I thought you know pills might not work this will work. I grabbed the razor I used my teeth to break it apart. It had hair in it. I don't know what part of the body that hair was from and I don't want to know. I don't even know whose it was. I broke that razor apart with my teeth. Got the blades out. And just started going up my arm. I solved the scar. And I was sobbing. I think that's the only reason someone... I was, I was sobbing really quietly. I thought but someone must have heard me because they came in. They must have unlocked the first bathroom and then they started banging on the door and I said, hold on or something like that. And they kept banging and they said, Katie, Katie, like, let me in. 
And I was like, no, hold on, like, just a second. And they unlocked the door somehow. I don't even remember who it was. Grabbed the razor from me. I tried to fight it out of their hand. I begged them to not take it from me. I begged them to let me keep going. They took the razor from me. And I just sobbed. I said, why, why, why won't you just let me die? Why won't you just let me, why, why are you doing this to me? Why are you taking this from me? And then that girl was sobbing. My boyfriend's sister was sobbing. Everyone in that whole room was crying. And I feel bad for whoever's razor it was because if that was me and someone had hurt themselves with my razor, I would feel so guilty and I, it's not even their fault anyway. So, the girl who had talked to Makani the other night, Melinda, she came in. She was trying to calm me down. Everyone else had left. And then the guy, the guy who had yelled at me and my boyfriend the other night, who had been giving the, like, lecture in front of everybody, he came in with a preacher. And he was trying to sit me down. I'm, like, bleeding really bad at this point. Well, oh, before this, I called my mom. Um... She couldn't understand me because I was crying so hard. Melinda, we're calling her, she she explained to my mom, there's a lot of blood, we don't know, uh, we think she's going to be okay, but my mom's like, what's going on, what's going on? And she said, um, your daughter hurt herself, I think it was a, sui a suicide attempt. Um, we're wrapping it up right now. We called the police, um, they're getting an ambulance here. Well, we're waiting for the ambulance, because this is like out in the middle of nowhere. The guy who had been lecturing the other night, who yelled at me and my boyfriend, came in. He sat down and he said, you know, have you ever accepted God into your life? I said, yes, of course, I'm, I'm Catholic. And he was like, oh, psh, I used to be Catholic. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not the same of, as, like, real faith and real belief in God. You know, I used to be Catholic, and you think that you're really connecting with God, but you're not. And he said, do you, do you accept God into your life right now? And I said, yes. And, like, he said some words. I don't even remember. It was all a blur at that point. And, basically, now I'm saved in that church. So, he said, now, because you're bleeding so bad, we don't know if you're going to make it. So, he said, like, something like, um, you're saved in the eyes of God, so if, and your sin is leaving you with the blood. So, if, if you bleed out and die right now, you'll go to heaven because you're saved. Or something like that. And he was like, and if you live then all of the demons within you will go away, all of the nonsense in your life, all of these personalities that you've created or something like that, or all of these personalities that you think you need, you won't need anymore now, now that you've had this experience. All you'll need is the Holy Spirit, and you won't need this anymore. It'll all be over with, and you'll be healed if you survive. And I was like, okay, like, whatever, you know? At this point, like, I don't, there's nothing you can really say to me to make me feel better. And I don't think he, he could really make me feel worse either. I was just so low at that point. But Melinda, like, told them to leave. And she talked to me and Makani came out. She talked to Makani. Makani was the most suicidal, I think. And she got someone else to come out. I don't remember who it was. Um. And they ended up, like, holding my arm up because it was wrapped. Held my arm up so the blood wouldn't leave as fast. And then when these two police came, they were actually, like, the sheriffs. Because we were seriously out in the middle of nowhere. It was, like, a 20-minute ambulance ride. They were asking me questions while we were there. Like, where, where are you from? Oh, Woodward for cool. Yeah, yeah, I heard of that place. And, um, Melinda came with us in the ambulance. Where we, I still talk to her occasionally. Um, she's really sweet. And, um, obviously I survived. That's how Angel was created. From that whole experience, it was so traumatic for us that Angel split off. Um. I was in the hospital for maybe an hour and a half, two hours before my dad and his mom, my grandma Jill, came. They talked to me for a while and signed some papers and I was released and I went home. Um, I wanted to go back 
to the place so I could see my boyfriend because he was he apparently was so upset he had he was crying obviously he punched a hole in a wall or something and hurt his hand um he he wanted to go in the ambulance with me but they were like no you can't go with her you know you're a boy you're it's like impure for you to be with your girlfriend or something stupid like that but Melinda can go with her and it was just some more bullshit like that so I wanted to go back and see him and apologize to him and talk to him and I didn't get to until a week later or something when I saw him no actually I think it was only a couple days I saw him and, you know, my arm was all bandaged up. It might have been the next day or a couple days later. And um, I apologized then. We both cried. and Yeah, it was just a whole crazy experience. There were so many details that I, I've even left out because I can't remember all of it. And even if I did, this video would be way too long. But that's the gist of it. Um... That's what happened. Um, I saw flashbacks to it sometimes because, like, just everyone yelling at me, trying to shove me to the ground, saying all these things that I don't know how they even knew these things about me. And I was terrified. And Angel gets those flashbacks the most. Um, and Makani does too. I get them sometimes. But, um, yeah, that's what happened, um, that's the story, I, I know it's really, really a downer, it's not a happy story at all, but what can I say, that's the story, thanks for watching, the next video we make will be hopefully a lot happier, bye guys.